Live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE, covering Microsoft Ignite. Brought to you by Cohesity and theCUBE's ecosystem partners. Welcome everyone to day one of theCUBE's live coverage of Microsoft Ignite here at the Orange County Civic Center. I'm here, I'm Rebecca Knight, my co-host, Stu Miniman. This is the first CUBE show ever at Microsoft. It's unbelievable. Yeah, Rebecca, it, it, it's a little surprising. Uh, you know, we started back in 2010 doing these events. We've done hundreds of shows. We've done thousands of interviews. We'd have lots of Microsoft people, but the first time at a Microsoft show, there's plenty of people I bumped into that don't know theCUBE, 30,000 people in attendance here, so really excited to dig into this community and ecosystem and show them what it's all about. We're making history. So, so today we had Satya Nadella up there on the main stage. Uh, what, what is your big takeaway from his keynote, Stu? Yeah, so, so Rebecca, uh, you know, Satya Nadella obviously has, has really helped turn around Microsoft's, uh, really the way people think about Microsoft, because it's interesting. When I look at the people we're going to be talking this week, lots of them have been with Microsoft 10 years, 20 years or more. So Microsoft is one of those stalwarts in technology. Uh, they, they are obviously critical in a lot of environments. Uh, everything from you know, the latest you know, Windows 2019 got announced uh, today, there's excitement there, but they're playing in the cloud. They're playing all over the environment. But Satya has brought new energy, some change in the culture I know you're going to want to talk about, um, and really came out talking about you know, the vision for the future. And what was interesting to me, compared to some other big tech shows that I go to, it wasn't you know, it wasn't product focused, it wasn't on the new widget. They didn't, you know, touched on things like Azure and of course AI uh, and some future things, but it was really, you know, business productivity at its core is what I think about. As if you think about Microsoft, I mean, we, you know, we've all used, you know, the Office suite and watched that go from, you know, Microsoft getting into the apps to being the main apps to, you know, pushing people to Office 365. So, well, you know, I hear things about like business productivity and when they put in the intelligent cloud and the intelligent edge, it wasn't product categories they went into, but you know, really speaking to broader terms to the business. So uh, it was interesting and a little bit different from what I would hear at say, you know, the companies you compare them to, if, you know, the Amazons of the world, the VMwares of the world. Uh, so, so a slightly different, uh, you know, messaging. I, I couldn't agree with you more, and just to, talking about the different kind of energy that Nadella brings to this company. Microsoft, as you said, a lot of the people here are veterans. They've been here 10 or 20 years. Microsoft is, is pushing on 45 years old. I mean, this is a company that's entering middle age um, at, at, in an industry that is all about the new, the fresh, the buzzy, and so, it, so he, really does, he really does bring that kind of fresh outlook to it. Uh, his, his catchword of the day is tech intensity. And this is what he talked about, how we not, we not only need to be ad adopting the latest and greatest technology, we also need to be building it. Seems like he was really doubling down on this idea that industry leaders need to be pushing boundaries in whatever industry they may be in. Yeah, um, and, and, and I did like that because it's interesting. You know, the, the easy comparing, and I hope I don't do it too much, but you look at Amazon. Amazon talks to those builders. That's like the core, what you say, when you go to the airports that have their branding, it's all about the builders. So, you know, it's the cloud native piece. I want the developer, developer, developer. Well, Microsoft knows the thing about developers too, but they bridge that gap. Uh, when we first talked about the world hybrid cloud, Microsoft's one of the first companies that comes to mind uh, when I think about because they have such a base in the legacy world they're modernizing that world, and they are helping to build that, that next generation space. So Microsoft isn't one to necessarily chase the new shiny. Um, they've done lots of big acquisitions. I mean, you talk to developers, you know, they bought GitHub. You know, that's the center. It's like, you know, if you're a developer, what's your resume? Oh, well, just check me out on GitHub. You know, see how many <laughs> stars I have, that kind of stuff. Um, so, you know, that's where Microsoft lives, uh, and as you said, right, tech intensity, that balance between what do you buy and what do you build? I like that commentary from Satya. Um, what I liked about him is saying, look, there are things that have been commoditized out there and you probably shouldn't waste your time building. I always say, tell, tell companies, look, there's things that you suck at or things that other people do way better. Let them do that. Why are you spending your cycles reinventing the wheel? The thing I didn't love as much is he was like, well, you know, you got to be careful who you partner with. You don't want to necessarily partner with somebody that's you know, going to be your competitor. Come on. <laughs> when I, I, I talked to a couple of users coming out and I'm like, what do you think of that? And they're like, look, 
here's the thing, love Microsoft, use Microsoft, but we use Amazon, we're going to use both. It's a multi-cloud world, lots of SaaS, multiple public clouds, and I want to hear how Microsoft lives in that world. You know, they can't not partner with Amazon. Matter of fact, I was reading one of the press releases, oh, Skype will be available on the new Amazon Echo Show. Um, so, you know, it's the world of co-opetition. You've got, you know, look around this ecosystem. Everybody, you know, you partner where you can, you, you, you know, try to overlook the places where you fight, and you, you got to help the customers. And I think Microsoft does a good job, but uh, yeah, you, you can't just say that, you know, let's not talk about Amazon or AWS because, oh, that's going to be competitive, you know, really. And also, and, and, and it's sort of what he says and what he does, which are two, two different things, right. because he also brought up uh, the CEO of Adobe and the CEO of SAP up there to talk about this new open data initiative. He talked, at, all three CEOs talked at length about this small data problem that companies have, which is that they have all of this, this vast amount of digital information that they are creating and, and storing and manipulating, uh, but it's all kept in silos. And so they, they, they know a lot, but, but this, this end isn't talking to this end. Yeah, and so I, I mean, they're, they're, they're apt to, they, they want to change that. They're setting out to change it. You know, three companies that if you were to tell me, okay, who's helping and doing well with digital transformation and understands my data, well, you couldn't do much better than starting with Microsoft, uh, Adobe, and SAP. So absolutely great suite. Uh, you know, Adobe and SAP both made acquisitions in the space, they understand the data, and you know, I have to give huge kudos to Microsoft on how they're doing in open source. I've got enough years in the industry that I think back to you know, when things like Linux were going to help try to topple uh, you know, Microsoft. And you see Microsoft you know, embracing uh, the, almost half of the workloads in Azure are Linux. Uh, they had announcements, they were talking up on stage about partnering with Red Hat, uh, and you know, Microsoft working with developers, working in the cloud. Open source is you know, critically important there. Talk about AI, open source has to be a key piece of these. And the Open Data Initiative, I like what I saw, you know, big names, there were definitely some surprise out of it. It was kind of the biggest news out of Satya Nadella's keynote this morning. The thing I will drop back on and say, okay, we've all seen some of these announcements out there. Would have loved to see a customer uh, or an example. Satya Nadella did a good uh, talking about uh, some of the IoT solutions that are going to get to AI, and uh, I think it was a utility that was like, here they have, they're trialing it out and everything. So, you know, how do we measure the success of this? It's extensible, and they said absolutely other partners and, and other customers can tie into this, but is this a year, two years, how long before this becomes reality? You know, hopefully, you know, three years from now we look back and say, you know, we were there at something really important to help customers own and take, you know, take their data and take it to the next level, but as of right now, it's uh, you know, <laughs> some, some, a good move by some very strong players, and of course, Microsoft partnership's key to what they're doing. They've identified the problem, and that, and that is what, that's what, that's what today was about, sort of, we know this is, this is a problem, we're, we're going to work on this together. And I think it's also, talking about the open source angle, which you brought up, it really is emblematic of this kinder, gentler Microsoft, which is all about inclusivity, all about helping everyone do better uh, at their job and in their lives. Yeah, uh, Rebecca, I, I love your take. Uh, you know, when you talk about diversity, you talk about uh, the, the culture of change. I mean, Satya leading from the front, front from the top. Uh, you know, we covered uh, you know a few years ago. He put his foot in his mouth at a Grace Hopper event, but you know, very much you know a lot of women involved. Uh, we're going to have a number of women executives on the, on the program here. What, what do you see for Microsoft in this space? So, so the incident you're referring to is when he was asked about how a woman should ask for a raise, and he, and he basically said, oh, you really shouldn't ask. Just do your best work, and, uh, and, and the rewards will come to you. Well, any woman in, in any industry, regardless of technology, knows that's just not the way it works. And I think, particularly now, he can look back and say, oh my gosh, that was a gaffe. Uh, but even then, he recognized it, and he apologized immediately and said, no, things have got to change, and I need to be part of the solution. So he does have a lot of initiatives around uh, diversity in tech and helping women, women reach leadership positions. In terms of the, the cultural transformation that you, were that you referenced at the very beginning of the show, his book is called Hit Refresh, and it really is all about 
the, the growth mindset, which is the work that Carol Dweck has done um, and a Angela Duckworth too. So this is really about this constant learning, this constant curiosity, this constant don't be a know-it-all, be a learn-it-all, be, be, be so willing to collaborate and, and hear other perspectives and don't, don't dismiss other people's perspectives out of hand and that's really that's the way they want to operate as a company and as a culture, and then they also want to push that out into how it, uh, how its products behave in the workplace and how they help teams work together. Yeah, and I mean that, be a learn it all, not a know it all. Not only resonates with me, but it's core to the mission of what we do here on the Cube. <laughs> Look, my first Microsoft show. Trust me, I've been studying hard on this. I mean, I've known Microsoft since you know my earliest days working in the tech community uh, and, and the like, but. You know, first time coming in. We always know that people need to learn, they want to learn, uh, and that's one of the things that, that we hope our three days of coverage is going to help people understand, get a taste for all the things that are going on in the show. That you know, there are what hundreds, if not thousands, of sessions that are all recorded. How do I choose what to go, you know, dig into? What announcements mean the most? You know, what 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 am I going to want to dig into? So that's what, one of the things that I was uh, excited to hear and excited to help bring to our community here. Right. So we're going to help our viewers do that, and we're going to learn a lot from our great lineup of guests. So Stu, it's it's really exciting to be here. We're going to kick off uh, three days of coverage in just a little bit. I'm Rebecca Knight for Stu Miniman. Stay tuned to theCUBE here at Microsoft Ignite.